lot of options, and he's just gonna trust that he can outplay. Yeah, we'll see how it works out for Alex Schmancy, of course, a player with plenty of accolades, a top 16 finish at this year's World Championships. Last season did win the European International Championships, and that was his first big cornerstone victory at one of these premier events of regional championships or international championships. Mm -hmm. He had a top eight at LAIC back in 2018, and he is no stranger to success at regionals. He's had countless top eights, it feels like, and you see there, four-time regional finalist. And it is gonna be this weekend, the Comfe Sableye and Radiant Charizard trying to carry him forward in this bracket. Yeah, and looking across the table, you know, Alex Schumanzi, tons of accolades, and now getting set up, Ryan Miller with the Maridon, Charlotte Regional Top 8 2024. This is kind of the makings of his string of victories, perhaps. This is a great place to begin. Biggest tournament of all time. Went ahead and made Top 8 with Maridon, the deck that you and I thought would just be carried by its raw consistency and you know a slight edge in a handful of matchups thanks to iron hands itself yeah and that iron hands is gonna have to throw some hands in this top eight match <laughs> if ryan wants to move on in this bracket that's definitely going to be the key card we'll be keeping our eyes on and see if ryan can get that rolling quickly or not in this top eight match i'm excited skarzig can't wait to see what's going to happen here it definitely feels like a little bit of a David versus Goliath type moment. Absolutely. Of course, Alex, extremely established, extremely well-known and respected by his peers as being a great player. Ryan Miller, a newcomer, a, a face that I'm not familiar with and many at home are not as well. Can't wait to see what's gonna happen here. Who's gonna come out on top? A lot of, you know, storied names have been having such powerful records great win streaks coming from day one into day two. I think that that's really been the talk and the word on the street, right, for Charlotte is that this is where all of the big names are really going to come to fruition in such a large tournament. But every top eight, it seems like there is one unknown factor, one new player that has managed to make a decent meta read, has been kind of waiting in the wings for their opportunity to shine. And for Charlotte, that is certainly Ryan Miller. Prize cards look pretty even to me, Chip. Nothing really jumped out. A couple comfe in the prizes for Alex Shemansky. Certainly less than ideal. He is playing the Hisuian Heavy Ball, so that mm -hmm. can be a, a card that can activate one more of those Pokemon. And here we go. We're off to the races. Top eight underway. Battle VIP pass. Beautiful to get that excellent start. Of course, one comfe will be grabbed. A Radiant Charizard is the Radiant Pokemon of choice, folks. Remember, you can only have one, so there's no Greninja in this build. A little bit less access to those resources, but thankfully, two Comfey will be grabbed. And Alex Shemansky, much more reliant on Sableye as well. Very old school Lost Zone style of deck and uh, needs to get that Lost Zone filled up quickly. Meanwhile, Ryan Miller starting with Mute EX in the active spot can also help get some additional resources. Right away, Alex trying to get into these come phase, wants to utilize as many flower selectings as possible. And one of the big stories for the Lost Box decks is just how many tough decisions are they going to be forced to make? How many really important cards are you going to have to come to terms with Lost Zoning earlier than you would have liked? Looks like it wasn't too bad of a decision for Alex to start things off, though. Yep, so Mew EX, again, just starting the active Nest Ball is the card of choice. Most likely grabbing a Maridon. You go for the Tandem Unit, grab another Maridon, get the bench set up. Iron Hands is in the deck. Ryan Miller's counting out these Pokemon already about to get established. And this was one of the main selling points of Maridon, at least for me, Chip, was, um, you know, Maridon EX being a pseudo VIP pass, allowing you to very consistently get your Pokemon in play and get established. Yeah, Ryan is playing kind of a pseudo hybrid build of this Maridon deck. It looks like, you know, we've seen people lean into the research with other supporter cards like Iono and Boss's Orders, and mm -hmm. then we've seen the other version of the deck be popularized more recently, thanks to Nick Robinson's top eight at San Antonio, I believe it was, with the Peony build, you know, discarding your hand, finding your specific trainer cards, and using that Mew EX to give you that consistent draw power. But Ryan's actually playing a bit of a hybrid build. Like I mentioned, he's got 
multiple research in his list and multiple peony in his list. So wow. A yeah, lot of hand turbo. discarding is going to happen here. Yeah, th this was kind of the new Vogue, right, Chip, is having the turbo Maraidon because of the peony, just discarding your hand, getting those electric generators, getting established. One Mareep now on the bench and Luminion V to find a supporter. Ryan Miller going second, and peony is available. Looks like that's going to be the option. There is just... There's still, the bench is now p perfectly full. The rest of this hand is going to get discarded. Raichu V and a beach court going to the discard pile. And I think the thing Ryan is hoping for here is the opportunity to set up the turn one Iron Hands EX. Go immediately Ooh. for that amp you very much. Take two prizes before your opponent has really got much of a setup going. And we know that that's what he's doing with the double generator grabbed immediately from Peony. This monstrous lead could be so good. As long as the electric generators hit, there's one lightning energy so far off of the first generator. Going to shuffle up and try again. Squawkabilly EX is still available as well with that squawk and seize to get some fresh cards. A few more shots at the electric generator. Yeah, it has the Mew EX as well. Two really powerful basic Pokemon to utilize those abilities to see so many cards. You can see why this deck is so enticing for so <laughs> many players. You get to draw tons of Pokemon cards and, you know, hopefully hit really hard really quick. And if you can get some free wins like Needs this, it really hit helps. Here. Oh, no energy Nothing. found. Nothing. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I th Alex Shemansky there, I think he's breathing a sigh of relief. That <laughs> would have been a big momentum swing. Now, Ryan still could pull off the turn one. Ampu very much is going to need a little bit more help to do it. He does play one copy of double turbo energy. Mm -hmm. So he can find that in combination with yet one final electric generator. Yeah, so it's just going to be re restart first to get three cards. Much easier to empty your hand. You're throwing away more, less resources when you go for the Squawk and Seize Choice Spell. Um, no, Pokemon Catcher, and it is a Tails. Yeah, just get Pokemon, that out of the hand. Pokemon Catcher is interesting. I don't think you would want to KO anything besides the Comfey. Maybe just playing it just for funsies. Who knows? <laughs> I don't think there's much reason to KO the Cramorants. And let's see what the draw is for this turn. Oh, there's all there's the energy all, there cards. There are, Chip. X XP share is also nice to get set up. One of the new ideas from a ride on builds in order to keep that pressure alive, um, to keep your lightning energies going. You're less reliant on Flaffy that way. Now, Ryan does have a town store in the hand. He does have one copy of Forest Seal Stone in his deck. So he could utilize the town store to search out the Forest Seal Stone, put that Seal Stone onto something like the Luminion V, and try to get one more card rolling. But he's going to hold off for now. Right back over to Alex Shemansky. Yeah, and even though Ryan Miller doesn't get the, you know, the high roll of the turn one, Ampy very much, Alex Shemansky playing a standard Lost Zone deck is still going to be pretty slow with the Radiant Charizard being the late game option, you know, that as long as you're more measured in the, where you're taking your prizes should be pretty strong. Boss's orders brings up Mareep, however, Artizone now finding the Sableye out of the deck. Just I think he's double just checking. checking his prizes. Yes, this double is checking here for the prizes. Finally, a proper deck search. Yeah. Grabs the second Cramorant. Does grab the second Cramorant here. Only two cards in the Lost Zone, however, and with the boss's orders being the supporter played for turn, that means there's no Colrus experiment. It looks like it's going to be another slow turn here for Alex Shemansky. And if Alex is forced to kind of take another one of these slower turns, this is another opportunity for Ryan Miller to get that ampy very much. Mareep, and this is the one that just has one retreat cost as well, Chip. So yes. it's pretty easy to get this out of the active. Town store bumping the artisan. Now the opportunity to find the forest seal stone is alive, and we can keep going from here. Yeah, let's look through that deck, see if the Forest Seal Stone is there. It actually might be in the prize cards. Oh, Scarzig. that escaped my notice, Chip. Just going to be an XP share grab. This gives a lot of information to Alex Shemansky as well. Yeah, grabbing that EXP share. Worst case scenario here, even if Ryan is not able to pull off the Ampu very much, you know, he can go for the... 160 damage attack there, the first attack on the Iron Hands. But if he hits one energy here on the generator, we could see that Ampu very much. No energy oh. again. What a whiff. So much lightning energy in the hand. 
two in the prizes, and they're just not lining up with the generators. I mean, even this Alex Shemansky shaking his head <laughs> up there. Can't believe that. You got to feel so bad for your opponent. You know, he might have experimented a little bit with Maridon prepping for this tournament and knows the pain. Perhaps Flaffy can be grabbed here. Got to get Maria out of the active first. This is important, Chip, because if you evolve into Flaffy, then that's two retreat cost. Yeah. It Things get really dicey. Depends on if you're committing to the switch card being your way to get the Flaffy out of the mm. active spot, right? If you just find a switch or an escape rope, that also will work. Now, with the Flaffy, Ryan can still pull off the Ampy very much this turn. It is still unfortunate. You want to get as many energy cards in play as you can. Uh, but yeah, looking with the restart of the Mew, hoping for a switch and does not find it. The lightning energies are on top whenever the restart happens, whenever the squawk and seize happens, but not for the electric generator. Ryan Miller has this ticking time bomb oh, of the he... Iron Hands EX, but nothing to capitalize on just yet. Yeah, just the pass of the turn. Back over to Alex, going to take this opportunity to use Ryan's stadium using that town store grabbing out that technical machine devolution. Not going to be good in this matchup, but wisely thinning the deck. This is a great game. Yeah, great way <laughs> to, you know, just use your opponent's stadium just to help out a little bit more, especially with how slow Alex Shemansky's start has been. Uh, making sure the flower selectings are hitting some key cards is more important. Double turbo energy being offered up mm. alongside a... Not quite seeing it, Chip. It looks like it is a beach court, the way that mm. Alex would have liked to be able to move this Comfey from the active position. I guess they <laughs> they kind of do one and the same at this point. There's the attach and retreat. Try, still trying to get this Cramorant up. Wants the spit innocently to take down the Mareep. Stop that Dynamotor ability from bringing lightning energy from the discard pile onto these benched Pokemon. Yeah, a little interesting to see Alex ditch the Fog Crystal. He could have used that to go get a basic Psychic Energy, retreat this act. Oh, no, he's already retreated this turn. That's mm -hmm. why. Never mind. Yeah, can't retreat twice in a turn. Also attached an energy already. Yeah, I need to pay attention to our little markers up there, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, keeping the town store in play, especially was offered the Beach Court. And Beach Court is also, you know, a stadium that Maridon really likes to use. So Alex Shemansky very wisely not putting down a stadium that can be used. The third EXP share coming out from Ryan, that's not something you really expect to see all that often. That is a heavy, heavy count of that card. Ryan really valuing that energy retention. Not as valuable mm -hmm. really in a matchup like this. Things are going to be a little bit slower more often than not. Uh, this is quite the scuffed game as well, I would say. <laughs> you know, these players, neither of them really are having their game plan go according to plan. And Ryan still unable to find a switch, is going to have to settle for the retreat and just a one prize knockout with the Iron Hands EX. Right. This game has just been really trying to come alive through fits and starts. Dynamotor can only attach to a benched Pokemon, so it is just going to be Iron Hands coming up in the active to very sadly claim one prize. Fortunately for Alex Shaman uh, for him, Alex Shemansky is not running, you know, the Dragonite V and all these other things that Lost Zone used to run, so the Iron Hands EX is quite safe. Yeah, and this actually is going to be pretty decent for Ryan Miller. He's basically going to guarantee with this arm press that he can get three prize cards from this Iron Hands EX. Alex Shemansky's best way to respond to the Iron Hands is with his Radiant Charizard, which he has to utilize cards like the Raihan and the one single copy of Mirage Gate that he plays, the double turbo energy that he plays. Mm -hmm. you know, he needs to utilize these cards to get enough energy onto the Radiant Charizard because its excited heart ability gets more powerful as the game goes on. And this is the only thing in his deck that can really one hit KO in Iron Hands EX. And I don't think he's going to be able to get the necessary energies on it in order to pull off the attack this turn. I really do like the idea, Chip, right? Having the double turbo energy, having the Raihan, just to meet that hefty colorless energy cost. And so the Radiant Charizard is attacking a little bit sooner than your opponent might expect or before they really understand what's going oh. on. You never love to see that. Raihan for a Colrus. That is the play <laughs> Alex Shemansky has to go for. You, of course, can only play one supporter card a turn. So anytime you're doing something more defensive like this, go for the Colrus. That means you're not planning to have much happen for you on this turn. And this is pretty scary, right? If you're Alex Shemansky, you're kind of putting one of your late game win cons on the bench in that Radiant Charizard. And it's a liability if this gets knocked out early, then you have to search it back out of the discard pile, get it reestablished, attach a bunch of energies to it. 
just going to be a nice, a nice spiz innocently onto the Iron Hands EX, dealing a little bit of damage there. But now, with one more lightning energy, and he very much can come through. Yeah, and there's plenty of energy in the hand. And Ryan does have a bit of a choice here. There is both Boss's Orders and Peony in his hand currently. So if he wants to chase down the draw power of the Comfey, potentially, you know, Alex Schmancy with only five cards in his lost zone currently, could have a harder time getting to the 10 if that Comfey goes down. Right, and after the Chorus was grabbed off of Raihan, you know that that is going to be the supporter that Alex Shemansky wants to go for, and you're anticipating another kind of I need resources, just establishing play from Alex. Going to be boss's orders Ooh. again, chasing down that Radiant Charizard. You Doesn't want to deal out. with it. Yeah, you did call this one out, Skarzig. It's probably just going to have to be the arm press then, because Ampy very much only deals 120 damage. Arm press dealing that 160 to one hit KO the Charizard. And this is honestly solid. Maybe guaranteeing a four prize game from this Iron Hands. I don't know if Alex is going to have an easy time responding to this with that Charizard being knocked out. Like you said, he's mm -hmm. going to have to find a way to get it back. And the idea here with the Lost Zone deck, right? You're playing just all single prize Pokemon. You are trying to guarantee that the game goes a certain length. You know, you have a much easier time figuring out how many turns you have to get your game plan online. How many reps of Lost Mine am I able to come out with? And with the Iron Hands EX really accelerating the timeline that Lost Zone wants to operate on, things get very much out of Alex Shemansky's wheelhouse and comfort zone. Yeah, we'll see how he navigates this. Countercatcher being found is a strong card. Technical Machine Devolution just thinning that out, really. Thinning his hand out, more than likely. Lost Vacuum, just trying to find uh, ways to get cards into the Lost yep. Zone. Finally, looks like it's done, thanks to that Chorus experiment. Grabbed off the Raihan. Nice. Uh, and the Lost Vacuum is getting rid of the Technical Machine, which, as you already pointed out, Chip, isn't very useful in this matchup. So just send it to the Lost Zone and set up for Sableye. Yeah, and if he can get a Psychic Energy onto the Sableye, get that into the active spot, we'll be able to see that be the perfect math to KO this Iron Hands EX. Beautifully done. The Super Rod puts those energies back in and into Mirage Gate. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Chip, did he not put the Raging Charizard back in? Yeah, and I, I don't think he did because he has Clara in his mm -hmm. hand currently. Mm -hmm. And making a bit of a read on Ryan's deck here, assuming that he does not play any hand disruption, which is pretty common from these peony builds of the Maridon deck. Right. So Alex Shemansky really utilizing his meta knowledge at this point to make a good call. Yeah, to keep this supporter in place. That, and that's that what way makes he Clara guarantees so his strong. way to get mm -hmm. the Charizard next turn. Yeah, you can get the Charizard and this Fire Energy back, maybe even get the Sableye and the Psychic Energy back. Keep these threats going. And the beautiful endgame checkmate for these Lost Zone decks, right, is to have the Sableye with the energy attached, set up and ready to go, and then Charizard also ready to go. So you always have something to attack with to bring this game back. Two prizes now for Alex Shemansky to even things up. No amp you very much to accelerate this timeline. Yeah, this is kind of an interesting spot for Ryan Miller. He did get to retain, retain one energy thanks to that EXP share onto that Maridon, mm -hmm. and then attach for turn, plus the Dynamotor. That can power up a Photon Blaster. Oh, another one. Iron Hands this EX would be times good. Yep. two. This would be really strong if Ryan can pull off the Ampu very much right now. Forest Seal Stone now being attached to the Inteleon V, and... I think you had mentioned it earlier, Chip. He's out of electric generators from this point. I think he has one generator left. We do know that double turbo is something that is in his deck list. And I do right. see the double turbo in the deck. So it's going to be Peony first. Grab the electric generator after discarding surely, the hand. Surely, surely this one hits some energy cards, right, <laughs> Starzig? <laughs> the deck is so thin now, Chip. Surely oh. this must be the way, just mathematically. And grab a switch card. Switch card. Yes. and That's is, the nice chicory to art. I like it. I, I do like the decision to go ahead and flip that V-Star marker, thin the deck of the one card. He's going all in on Iron Hands EX as his attacker this turn, giving himself the best chance to hit an energy card off this electric generator. I think if the Ampy very much doesn't hit, you know, then Maridon loses its go. edge for this matchup. 
And he does hit two Ooh. energy off the first three. Doesn't even bother looking at the other two. <laughs> he finds the two energy and shuffles back in. The switch is also going to the hand. Now double turbo grabbed from the forest seal stone, attached to the Iron Hands EX, and now Amp, you very much can take two prizes and put Ryan Miller back on, on the trajectory to take game one. Not before using this restart on the Mew. Looking at a couple more cards here, and Dynamotor still can get one additional energy card into play. Now, things are going to get a little tricky here because Alex should have the lineup to respond to this knockout. So Ryan, while he's jumping pretty far ahead here, going down to just two prize cards remaining, Alex Shemansky can respond with a single prizer, that Radiant Charizard, one hit KOing, the Iron Hands potentially, and then from there, I don't think Ryan is going to have the way to set up a third Iron Hands EX. In fact, he has no way to do that in his deck list, not a single Super Rod available. Wow, so the map from Alex Schumansky does pay off. Thankfully, Ryan Miller kind of got off to a really rocky start. Ooh, but this could be a little worrisome because Alex Schumansky is forced to play the escape rope. Ryan happily sending oh, up this right. squawkabilly. That means that the Iron Hands is still in play, but Alex has the counter catcher to ensure that this Pokemon will still be KO'd. Beautifully done. Going to go for the Pal Pad as well. Raihan and Clara going back into the deck. Oh, not Raihan. Boss's orders, right? Makes sense. And now... Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh, he's tricking me. Yeah, he's tricking all of us. He's not totally sure what's going to be useful through the end of this game, assuming that he's going to have two more turns to try to take one additional or one additional knockout you know two additional prize cards trying to map out what exactly is the best most likely way for him to accomplish that and after the radiant charizard was played energy has been attached for turn Sableye still waiting on the bench radiant charizard does attack thanks to excited heart that energy count cost is only one takes down the iron hands ex for two prizes to even things up. And now the tempo is back into Alex's favor. Yeah, that EXP share, grabbing one more energy card onto this Maridon. Dynamotor accelerating yet once again. Photon Blaster is gonna be the way to take a potential KO here. As that Zapdos does hit the bench, that could be a decent one prize attacker, but I don't think Ryan has a way to weave that in here. Going to just have to be the Photon Blaster and cross his fingers that Alex Schmansky does not have a way to get back the Radiant Charizard to take his final KO. Let's see if Alex can find the pieces. Escape Rope, I think, gives him a decent shot. He might need to find another Counter Catcher. Oh, oh, Double Rope would have done it if Ryan had not wisely benched this second Zapdos because if there was no other Zapdos in play, Alex could Clara for the Charizard, play the Rope, Ryan, of course, would promote the Flaffy. Uh huh. And then now another rope would win him the game. But Ryan, with the bench of the Zapdos, is playing around the double rope option. Absolutely fantastic chip. And with Ryan Miller with one prize remaining, Alex Shemansky cannot recover the Charizard to take a two prize knockout. Is there anything that can be stranded? No. Everything else that potentially can be stranded just has one uh, retreat cost, you just bring up Zapdos, then try to buy yourself a little bit more time. Yeah, if he can, I don't know if he has that option available. This is going to be really close. He doesn't have the win in hand at the moment. He would have gone for it right away mm -hmm. if he did. We know the Clara is in hand. That gets the Charizard and the Energy card, but getting this pesky little one retreat Comfey out of the active spot is the only thing that's stopping Alex Shemansky from just winning this game on the spot. And it's always so heartbreaking, right? Lost Zone, it's kind of developed a reputation. Its original claim to fame was its ability to okay. just keep on switching from the active. But Roxanne is going to be the option for Alex Shemansky, trying to limit Ryan Miller's cards and just shuffle up and buy some time. Now, for Maridon EX, its Photon Blaster means that it cannot attack this upcoming turn, has to get out of the active, and something else needs to take its place, or it needs to retreat away and yep. back with a switch card. And Ryan does play quite a few switch and has not used any of them yet. There's the switch card. There is the fire energy. If Alex had found Nest Ball and Super Rod, I think he would have had the game-winning play. As it stands, though, it might just have to be switch cart into Sableye and cross his fingers that Ryan Miller did not find a switch off of the two cards from Roxanne. We're going to see all of those damage counters going onto the Flaffy to knock it out. Three extra on the Zapdos. Does Ryan have a switch? There it is. 
And there's the switch to bring up the next Pokemon, retreats back, etc. And Ryan Miller takes game one. That came down to the wire, Chip. Yeah, and it was really a scrappy game for both of these players. Neither deck was firing on all cylinders here. <laughs> scuffed, players, I believe, was yes. the term you used. And <laughs> scuffed it was, absolutely. A wild, wild sequence of events but eventually it is Ryan Miller coming out on top. Yeah, I mean, after hitting the first electric generator for one, things were looking nice, looking hunky-dory, but the Iron Hand sat there and had to get slowly powered up, just, you know, cranking up the uh, energy generators to just manually wind up that battery. Yeah, and the generators were really not kind to Ryan in game number one. And he still comes out on top. You have to wonder how much quick, more quickly he could have finished this game if he had hit some of those earlier generators. Right, and if Ryan Miller gets off to another slow start, there's also a chance that Alex Kamansky has a much more accelerated position as well, right? With the flower selecting into Colrus, an earlier lost vacuum, that would have really gotten the Lost Mine a bigger threat earlier in the game, especially with Mirage Gate, because of the double turbo energy, having the earlier threat of Charizard is so big for this matchup. Prize cards going out for these players. Generator and double turbo energy, not ideal from Ryan Miller, that Clara and the counter catcher from Alex Shemansky definitely could come up. He does play a pair of both of those cards. Ooh, starting Sableye in the active does make things a little awkward, but Mute EX is Ryan Miller's Ooh, start. Just an just attach of X. <gasps> attach XP share, attach a lightning energy and pass. Alex Schmansky opens up with Colrus's experiment on his first turn, sends away a switch card, keeps the Radiant Charizard, has his Suian Heavy Ball. And now playing this heavy ball, looking for maybe a Comfey crossing his fingers that one made its way into the prize cards, but there are no Pokemon there for him to choose. Fails the heavy ball. And so now with Sableye just stranded in the active, no Comfey being on the bench, Ryan Miller just attaching and passing. We're off to another scuffed game, Chip. <laughs> yeah, the, this is what high-octane Pokemon <laughs> gameplay looks like, Scarzig. When both players, you know, low roll, it's an even matchup. But honestly, I've said this many times on our broadcasts over the last couple of years. Really, these are some of my favorite games of the Pokemon TCG because any player can get to the point where they know how to play a deck whenever they open up with the perfect sequence of mm -hmm. cards, right? But players really get to express their skill, how good they are at the game whenever things don't go according to plan, whenever they have to do things outside of the norm. And that's exactly what we're seeing here in this set. Yeah, you can study plan A and plan B, but you know, yeah, how we're many on plan like, you know, Q or something like that <laughs> at this point. Starting Sableye, Escape Rope, Comfey, Three cards in the Lost Zone, thanks to Chorus, not too bad. Ryan Miller has to kick this whole hand with the Professor's Research and try to find something to get some threat going. Electric Generator was also part of the sacrifice for the resource. Yeah, we'll see if Ryan can piece together another way to attack here. Of course, Mew EX, that's genome hacking, copies the attack of whatever your opponent's active Pokemon is, so not going to be super strong. You know, <laughs> using spinning attack from Comfey doesn't seem like a good option. It does feel unlikely that Iron Hands EX would ever be powered up at this point. Of course, Ryan's early game draw power is going to be limited because he did not get to use Squawkabilly. That is a huge part of this Maradon deck is using Squawkabilly EX on the first turn of the game, and that is just something he did not get to do. Yeah, having the turbo part of this Maradon deck is kind of out of the window, and now it's a much more standard idea. Maradon EX found from the nest ball, tandem unit picking up Iron Hands EX, Raichu V being grabbed. Ryan Miller wants his V Pokemon in play to be a carrier for Forest Seal Stone. Town Store now being active as a stadium to find the seal stone. We're going to attach that right now. Yeah, and Ryan actually is not even playing a Raikou V, something that we're used to seeing from these Maridon lists. This Raichu is his only Pokemon V, so it has to be the recipient if he wants to use for his seal stone. Uh, sorry, he does also play Drapion V and Luminion V, but it's his only attacking 
Pokemon V, I should right. say. Yeah, that's and, and Drapion was discarded to the opening professor's research. Luminion V is in the prizes. So normally Raichu V likes to be, you know, the radiant Charizard of Maridon, that late game attacker that kind of comes down to take a big final knockout or get those big numbers when you need them. But right now it's like, no, you hold the four seal stone. That's your job for right now, Raichu. Yeah. Able to search the deck here from this Ultra Ball, trying to find another Pokemon. It will be another Mew EX, trying to get a little bit more card draw from the restart, making up for the fact that Squawkabilly was not an option for this game. And yeah, like you mentioned, let's not forget that that Four Seal Stone is in the hand. It is possible for there to be an Ampu very much this turn. Improbable, but yeah, possible. And it's going to start with this electric generator. Can he find a few energy cards? He does. Oh, is that a double? Yes, Chip. And now with the potential, after the shuffle, for a seal stone to grab the electric generator. Yeah. He, need, he has to attach an energy for turn as well. He's got two restarts to utilize to draw some extra cards. Pretty decent shot here for Ryan Miller to pull this off. Let's see it. He needs one more generator and to hit at least one energy most likely from it. See, p &E and other Iron Hands, Ooh. I believe. And he actually did not find an energy card or a generator. He would have liked to have found either of those. I think he may be going all in on the Forest Sealstone to hit another generator. He needs another double hit if he wants to pull off the Ampu very much. Now, worst case scenario, just going for the arm press, hitting for 160. That would be an acceptable outcome. The Charizard with the energy on it on the bench mm -hmm. is a little bit of cause for concern, to be honest. But yeah, not super likely Alex would be able to find the pieces to respond. Yeah, because if you take one prize, that's one less energy cost that it needs to attack. And then the threat of double turbo Let's energy. See it. Hits an energy card, Ooh. but it is just one. So I think we're going to have to end with the arm press here. Ryan doesn't have a way to thin this hand down currently to use his last restart, so he doesn't have a way to dig for another energy card. Yeah, just going to retreat the Mew EX. Does have free retreat, and then arm press for one prize. Kramer now being promoted into the active. There's three cards in the Lost Zone as of right now, but Koros' experiment will make sure that Lost Provisions is live. Battle VIP passes being sent to the Lost Zone. Very <laughs> easy choice. Easiest decision for a Lost Box player to make. You see a mid or late game Battle VIP pass, you throw it in the Lost Zone. Two Comfes now entering the bench, trying to get to 10 the Lost Zone. Sableye's already waiting in the wings for that beautiful Lost Mine attack to come through. Town Store being utilized now. It looks like searching the deck for any Pokemon tool card. Of course, all Alex plays are those Technical Machine Devolution. Not useful in this matchup, but it is a part of what makes this deck so strong in the given metagame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just running that to, in order to you know beat down on Gardevoirs or Charizards, yep. just a great tech option. And it's gotten Alex Shemansky this far and it's just a matter of him kind of making yeah. miracles happen. And that technical machine devolution as well should go to Alex Shemansky's hand. So we'll try to get word up there that that happens. Oh, yeah, with the town store. Yeah. Just, he's thinning it out, but he thinned it a little bit too hard there, Chip. Um, and after this shuffle, right, he was, he was going back in with the, with the fog crystal. And now the, the important thing, too, is that if you just attach the technical machine devolution. Yep, there we go. Yeah, then it would go to the discard pile anyway, but we just got to make sure that it stays in the hand for now. Looks like an attach for the turn on Charizard, trying to manually power that Pokemon up. Not normally the game plan from Alex. Not really even sure where this energy should go, throwing his hands up in confusion. Yeah, and this is kind of what happened last time, right? Where the, the Charizard was starting to get powered up, and Ryan Miller immediately hunted it down before it was too late. Then Alex Shemansky was reliant on Clara to keep that up. We'll see what Ryan goes with here. It's more than likely going to be an attempt at a Ampu very much. If I had to guess, just jump pretty far ahead here. And then Peony or Research could be the supporter for turn, leaning towards the Peony at the moment, discarding the whole hand, searching for two trainer cards. Probably going to grab a Switch, I would assume, mm -hmm. get that Raichu out of the active, and then one of these Mew 
into that active position. And then maybe something like Ultra Ball, it looks like, to thin that hand down for the follow-up restarts. The, the ultimate power of having two Mew EX in play is being shown right now. Yeah, exactly. Being able to repeatedly thin your hand down. I love going for the Peony over the research, too. You don't want to draw too many cards because you want those lightning energy to stay in the deck. XP share, switch, Ultra Ball, all grabbed now. Now, Ryan does still need to draw a lightning energy, right? There are mm -hmm. only three energy cards on this Iron Hands EX at the moment. Does need four for the AMP very much. But he's given himself a pretty good shot here. Going to draw at least five cards with the genome hacking, or sorry, the restart from these Mew EX. And after the restart, grabs two lightning energy, finds one to get onto the Iron Hands EX, and then the second restart finds Flaffy. Solid this turn draw. is really <laughs> coming together for him now, Chip. Iron Hands is established, ready to go. The battery is fully charged, and Mew EX has free retreat. Here it comes into the active for Amp you very much. Yeah, no uh, hands pumping across the table at this point. We're taking it a little <laughs> bit more seriously here <laughs> in Top Cut, but Alex Shemansky is going to need to find a way to respond. All he really needs is a basic fire energy, and he'll be able to take the KO, but he does find himself facing down a pretty large deficit here, six prizes to three at this point, immediately Beautiful. keeping that fire energy. Yeah, and you can see Alex Shemansky immediately promotes into the Charizard, doesn't go for the Comfe to get another flower selecting, doesn't want that to get stranded in the active and miss the opportunity to take the knockout. Radiant Charizard comes through to knock out the Iron Hands EX and remove this threat. Alex does have the Lost Vacuum with that Technical Machine Devolution in the hand. That can help get him closer to 10 cards in the Lost Zone on the next turn. For now, it will be that Combustion Blast. Of course, Ryan retaining an energy thanks to the EXP share and actually the pair of EXP share on do both of these Pokemon. And with Mew EX being promoted to the active, Ryan Miller once again has this beautiful pivot. See where the cards are going. What's the draw for turn? Get the Dynamotor set up. And once more, Zapdos coming alongside the Flaffy. So you have a way to play around that double escape rope. Keep a single prizer in the active. Deny the prize trade that Alex Shemansky is looking for. Yeah, I think Ryan discarded his second Iron Hand, so that's why we didn't see that come down. Electric Generator will get an energy card onto the Zapdos. That's something that would be really strong for Ryan if he could utilize it, try to get that one prize Pokemon in there. It messes up Alex's prize map. Uh. If you just attack with two or three two prize Pokemon, it's a pretty easy path for Alex to take all of his prizes. So the Zapdos could be a solid option at some point. Of course, Charizard having 160 HP means Zapdos can't be utilized realistically right now. But we actually might see the Mew get in there with the genome hacking. Ooh, very cheeky. Genome hacking is this additional utility and threat potential a lot of these decks have, but rarely does it come up, Chip. But this is going to be the play. Mew EX, and this was set up from turn one. Got the EXP share and a lightning energy attached to it. Ryan Miller was like, oh yeah, Radiant Charizard. Mew also can use Combustion Blast. There we go. And the damage reduction from double turbo energy is no big deal. Still more than enough to take out the 160 HP Radiant Charizard. Alex Schmansky promotes Comfe. Flower selecting sends Manaphy to the, disc, to the lost zone, rather. And now he has to evaluate resources. From this point, I think the prize trade is still in his favor. Get to go for the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Is Clara in the hand? Yes, it is, Chip. And that can grab back this Radiant Charizard. That sets up a pretty easy response KO, assuming Alex has a way to get this Comfe out of the active spot and puts him on path to close out the game, either with one more Radiant Charizard or even something like a Sableye to take out this Raichu that was hit earlier on in the game with the Cramorant. And that's what he wants to do. Beautiful Battle of VIP pass and the Devolution going to the Lost Zone thanks to Lost Vacuum. Ten cards now in the Lost Zone. Will Alex Shemansky just go for the Sableye here to take the prizes from the Raichu? or the Radiant Charizard. Zapdos comes into the active because of the escape rope. It's going to be Radiant Charizard promoted. Yeah, and that tells me that the counter catcher is waiting in the hand, determining which is the best Pokemon to target down. Looks like it will be the Mew EX. And taking this Pokemon out is going to put Alex in an OK position. Ryan, with two prizes remaining, has no way to close out the game on the next turn. Yep. Clara and Chorus's experiment shuffled back into the deck with Palpad, and now with Alex Shemansky, 10 cards in the Lost Zone, and Sableye ready to go on the bench. 
Ryan Miller might be in that dreaded Lost Zone checkmate box. Yeah, this is where Ryan is just going to have to cross his fingers. He does not play any hand disruption, so he can't Iono Alex or Roxanne Alex to put him at a low hand size. Ryan doesn't play any way to remove this Raichu from play. There's nothing like a Professor Turo scenario or even a collapsed stadium, which is more mm -hmm. common in these Maridon lists. So he's just crossing his fingers that Alex does not have an energy card for this Sableye and that he gets access to two turns. Because if Ryan has two turns, he will ultimately be able to close this game out. And this is the beauty of, you know, this classical Lost Zone, is by playing single prize attackers, you can manipulate the prize trade in your favor against these decks that run a lot of two prize Pokemon. And Maridon runs tons of Pokemon V and Pokemon EX that have very low HP. Ryan Tails here. on the Pokemon catcher. Yeah, trying to do what he can. If he could have gotten a heads on the catcher, he can maybe use the Zapdos as the attacker this turn and... Hope that Alex does not have a boss's orders or, I mean, it just doesn't really matter. I mean, the catcher does play around the Charizard being the win condition from Alex, but all he is going to need is a psychic energy. Mm hmm Restart, drawing a few more cards. Has another Pokemon He's catcher. Doing what try he to can. go for it here off the table. Roll it one more time. Tails. Another Tails, yep. Bad luck with the catchers. Middling luck with the electric generators. Just uses Dynamotor to set up the Zapdos. It's important to remember that comb Combustion Blast cannot be used two turns in a row. This, that is this true. Radiant Charizard does have to be switched out of the active. So even if Ryan Miller does miss the um, KO on the Radiant Charizard, could still be pretty awkward for Alex Shemansky to get this out of the active to actually go for the Lost Mine. Yeah, I'm not even sure that that's something that Ryan could utilize the fact that Charizard can't attack in multiple turns because it's not like he's setting anything up. Now, yeah. if he was to pass for a turn, maybe the Charizard gets stranded and he can power up something like the Iron Hands EX. That could lead to him mm -hmm. being able to close the game out, but we know both Iron Hands are in the discard pile. Yeah, it was really unfortunate where the Iron Hands was in the hand because of that peony where Ryan Miller needed to extend for those electric generators to set up the first one. So after the escape rope, Alex will just promote the Cramorant and quickly promoting now that Sableye has the psychic energy in hand to Lost Mine Raichu V. We're going to game three here in our top eight. This matchup has proven to be incredibly even chip. We felt that the Iron Hands EX would just really swing things in Maridon's favor, but in practice, it becomes very difficult to get that energy attached to that Pokemon. I mean, even if, even if you only hit with one Ampy very much, Alex Shemansky's deck is tailor-made to go for a 2-2-2 two, two, two prize map and make up that deficit. Yeah, we've seen the quick Iron Hands EX, but it's not been the quick Amp U very much. It did allow Ryan Miller mm -hmm. to jump out to an early lead, but to me, the big turn in this game is when Ryan Miller had to discard his other, his second Iron Hands EX. That did yes. not give him the option to utilize that card in future turns. He had a great hand to be able to do that. We see there on the right side, double turbo energy and electric generator. But sadly, the Iron Hands was already in the discard pile. And as players have kind of felt out their opponents, gotten eyes on the matchup, who knows if Ryan Miller played against any just standard Lost Zone box, you know, that just weren't Giratina over the course of, you know, these two days. And the adjustments are already happening back and forth for both of these players. Ryan Miller, I think here in game number three, is going to begin to heavily prioritize getting double Iron Hands EX onto the bench. The Sableye, the game winner there for Alex Shemansky. I feel like it's been a while since we've seen a Lost Mine on our stream. Really not a <laughs> popular choice as often as it used to be. You know, you see it as a one of tech in the Giratina decks, but players really not leaning into that. And oh, look at these prize cards for both of our players, honestly. Ryan Miller with three Lightning Energy and that one copy of Mareep in the prizes. That's not ideal. Over on Alex Shemansky's side, prizing a counter catcher. Doesn't love that. But we've got game three underway. Alex Shemansky starting with Kramer and the active and a battle VIP pass to open things up to Comfey are the selection off of that. And now he's just taking stock of what the rest of the Pokemon, rest of the cards that are in the deck, what the prizes are looking like. 
Ryan Miller fortunately starting off with the Squawkabilly EX. He's going to see a lot of resources on the opening turn, so I'm bracing myself for a pretty explosive start on his side. Yeah, Ryan Miller choosing to go second here in this game three. Of course, after losing a game in a best of three set, you get to choose for the next if you want to go first or second. Ryan really valuing the potential aggression of an early attack. We'll see if it pays off. Escape rope, comfy, flower selecting. In finds a switch card to bring up another Comfe. Two cards in the Law Zone. This is a much faster start than we've seen from Alex Shemansky in the previous games. Fire Energy being offered up and Raihan. Two strong cards, but Raihan has to go to the Lost Zone. Fire Energy is the card that goes to the discard pile. A attach, retreat, third Comfe in the active spot. Flower selecting number three, picks up a Coral's experiment. Good. Beautiful turn one. Yeah, this is the turn that we have been hoping to see from Alex Shemansky. And right away, Ryan Miller opening up with a VIP pass, starting the Squawkabilly. He has a PE in the hand. We are off to the races here in game three of top eight. We've had two scuffed games in a row for both of our players. It looks like things are finally firing on all cylinders. The Octane has arrived, Chip. It was delayed. You know, there was a little bit of a traffic jam. But now, finally, the electric generators are going to be coming out of the deck thanks to Peony, Maridon, Coming through with the Battle VIP pass with Tandem Unit, UEX picked up, Iron Hands, EX in the deck. You're gonna grab both of them. Yeah, Ryan's gonna get the unfortunate news here that his Mareep is prized. That would probably be his normal second mm -hmm. choice here off of the Tandem Unit, but getting the Raichu V down is pretty solid. You could always P and E for that Forest Seal Stone and go from there. Yeah, Squawkabilly EX still has not been utilized. Ultra yep. Ball thins the hand down a little bit more, gets rid of the Drapion card you don't need for this matchup at all, which is great. And Boss's Orders is the second card sent for the Ultra Ball. As we're gearing up here in our streamed top eight match, of course, the other three top eight, eight matches are being played out in the field, and we do have an update we can share. Vinicius Fernandez has gotten the 2-0 victory over Russell in the top eight. So Vinny moving on to the top four with his Lost Zone Giratina deck. Giratina staying alive, trying to claim another regional. We'll see if it can make the back-to-back -back happen. But in the meantime, we'll see if Ryan Miller can piece together the dream setup. I think he's already got an electric generator in the hand. Iron Hands EX, electric generator number one. There's an energy and two energy. Oh, it's energy. a double. His luck's turning around, Chip. Honestly, he is due. There have been <laughs> some really unfortunate plays here thus far in top eight. Really glad to see things firing on all cylinders for both of our players. And Ryan, off of the peony, has plenty of choices. It looks like electric generator and switch will be the options. Yeah, you don't want to get stranded, right, with this uh, Squawkabilly EX in the active. Once you get this Iron Hands EX set up, it's going to be Generator, Switch, still has Squawk and Seize, still has Restart. A lot more resources to be gained, more cards to see, Chip. Now let's remember, this game, Ryan has prized three Lightning Energy, so a little statistically less likely to find them. Oh, big whiff and on that Alex one. Alex Shemansky is so happy to see that. Switch into Mew EX a free pivot if the Iron Hands does get established. Still plenty of cards to be drawn. Another electric generator or maybe that double turbo energy are ways Ryan could activate his attacker here. Forest Seal Stone, of course, can uh, yeah, find that double turbo energy. Three cards from the restart to begin. Forest I think Seal that Stone. Forest Seal Stone was found right away. Forest Seal Stone on the Raichu V. Star Alchemy allowing Ryan Miller to search his deck for any card. Going to go for the Squawk and Seize first. Yep. Six cards being put into the hand. More lightning energy is being drawn, but I think it's okay. Yeah, you don't mind it too much if you have the guaranteed turn to amp you very much. And Alex did go aggressive, got the three cards in the Lost Zone on turn one, but it is still going to be a tall order to respond to the big Iron Hands EX in the second turn of the game. This is the key card. This is the Pokemon that's supposed to give Ryan Miller the edge in this matchup, and it's finally all coming together for the hometown hero. Let's see exactly... If he can piece it together, it looks like the double turbo was grabbed from the Forest Seal Stone. The problem with this, I will say, is that Ryan has not established any of his EXP share up oh, to this point. Oh, very true, very true. He does not have his Mareep in play to become a Flaffy on the next turn. So if Alex can respond to this Iron Hands, Ryan might be left reeling. 
Amp, you very much takes two prizes, a lot of lightning, and the Mareep still remain in the prizes. Alex Shemansky needs to fire back. Flower selecting, opening up the turn. Colrus experiment. And a and boss's orders. Ooh, two strong options. Colrus going to go to the lost zone. Boss's orders is so important for finding that prize map in the late game. Alex Shemansky already thinking so far ahead into the future. Plays the Colrus that's already in hand. Five cards from the top. Looking for his one copy of Mirage Gate, potentially. Could also try to find that double turbo energy. He does need a bit here to get the response. And I'm not seeing it in this hand, Skarzig. He can dig a little bit deeper. He's got one more flower selecting. There's a Raihan, and there's the Comfey. He's already played his supporter for turn, though. Yeah, the Raihan would have been a beautiful way to respond to that Ampy very much. And this will be the first time I think that Alex Schmancy has not been able to respond directly to the Iron Hands EX with Radiant Charizard. So now with this already powered up, double Ampy very much puts Ryan Miller in an insurmountable lead. Now, Alex does have a play of using the counter catcher to bring up the Zapdos that Okay. Ryan put on the bench, and that's exactly what we're going to see. Trying to stall this Pokemon active. He's going to hit it for 110 damage, leave it with just 10 HP remaining. But the important thing to note about Zapdos, two retreat cost. Ryan is going to need to find another switch if he wants to get this out of the active. Going to go for Ultra Ball first, thin the hand down. Needs to keep these Lightning Energies in the hand because there is no Dynamotor. Gets rid of just one of them, plus a Nest Ball. Looking through the deck now to evaluate how many switch cards do I have. Thins out a Maride on EX. Yeah, I think we're probably going to see a research here from Ryan. That is the only supporter I noticed in his hand. Peony, of course, could guarantee the switch. But now Ryan is going to have to cross his fingers to find it here off of a potential research. Town Store can thin one more card out of the deck. And this could be just game winning if Ryan can find a switch here. EXP share, grabbed a town store, attached to the Maridon EX, just setting up finally for some of this energy to stay in play, keep his attacking pressure up. There's one escape rope in the deck to switch. Yeah, the escape rope is interesting because if Ryan was to play the escape rope, Alex could just send up the Radiant Charizard EX. It's got 160 HP, and you would say the arm press, well, that does 160 damage but not with the double turbo energy attached. It's actually only <laughs> dealing 140. And that is a very important piece of this. Finds the escape rope, has to get the Zapdos out of the active regardless, and Alex Shemansky wisely promotes the Radiant Charizard because of that damage reduction. Electric Generator now finds one and two, two lightning energy. energy. But Ryan did already attach for turn. He put the energy on this Zapdos, so... He's not going to be able to power up the Maridon to attack here. It looks like it will have to be the Raichu. And while Raichu is very, very powerful, it is mostly used to KO high HP Pokemon V-Star and V-Max in the format. Using it to take just one prize can be very costly, as Dynamic Spark requires you to discard tons of lightning energy from play. XP share being attached to Zapdos. And yeah, it has to, it's a very heavy sacrifice. I think that's been the theme of Ryan Miller's gameplay so far, is having to make these tough sacrifices of resources just to get the job done. It's 60 damage per lightning energy, and it's three of them to take down Radiant Charizard to get one prize. Three lightning energy remaining in Ryan Miller's prizes. He did find that Mareep, which could be okay, but with the hit on the Zapdos, you know, benching the Mareep is something Ryan may have to think twice about as that would allow for Alex to have a two prize turn with Sableye KOing two Pokemon one prizers. Mm -hmm. And this eighth card going to the Lost Zone. Just with one Lost Vacuum, Alex Shemansky can very easily get to that 10 cards and get Lost Mine up and running. Mirage Gate now also in the hand. Um, the key card I'm seeing that isn't there for right now is Clara or Super Rod to get that Radiant Charizard back. Ryan quickly promoting the Mew EX from the escape rope. Alex has to look once more with the flower selecting. Drapion, that's not something you need in this matchup. Happy to throw that into the Lost Zone. And he did hit the Lost Vacuum, which is going to allow him to get to 10 cards this turn. Looking at the hand, looking at the hand, there is Raihan available. But Ryan Miller has three, prize le three prizes left. He's opened up to Roxanne here. 
Yeah, it looks like Rajan is going to have to be the choice for the turn. Alex really needs to start taking prize cards to keep tempo in this game, however. Yeah, Super Rod has to be the choice now. Radiant Charizard and the Fire Energy. Maybe one more Energy card being shuffled back in. Yeah, might just leave it down so that his Clara is a live target to get an Energy card. I do mm -hmm. like that decision. Leave yourself with more options in the future. Uh, and then having the Energy in the discard for Raihan yeah, now. That's important to remember as well. And what's the grab here, Chip? I'm not really sure what he can do. Just immediately grabs Radiant Charizard. And I think that will work because he does have the Mirage Gate in hand. So that can power up the Charizard, put two energy cards on it so that it can attack with Combustion Blast this turn, taking two prizes and giving Alex a shot to try to fight back here. This has been, you know, the theme, right? Ryan Miller jumping ahead with the Iron Hands EX. Alex Shemansky just being barely able to, to counter, right, with be it counter catcher, but the timing of the Radiant Charizard with this game, uh, with this build that's able to take advantage of it in the mid game has been so clutch, Chip. And using that double turbo energy while he can, will send up Radiant Charizard, take the one hit KO, using the Town Store to thin one card out of the deck as well. Might as well use that at this opportunity. Almost forgot about that stage, but Alex Shemansky is a better player than me. Of course, he would not forget to thin one card. Thinning is winning, and so it's taken two prizes with the Combustion Blast. Thinking about using the Lost Vacuum here, but doesn't really need to. We'll just use Combustion Blast. Taking two prizes. Let's see if Ryan Miller has a response, and he immediately promoting the Iron Hands. That tells me a boss's orders might be incoming. There's the attach for turn. There's still a double turbo energy on this Iron Hands. Very important to note, Chip, so the arm press and the ampy very much are doing lessened damage. You just want the extra prizes, though. Yeah, this the, the extra prizes here are the big thing because if Ryan just takes two prizes on something this turn, he only needs to knock out one thing mm -hmm. on the next, and that's going to be pretty easy for him to do with the Maridon on the bench that's got the EXP share on it. Also with the Raichu that's already got an energy card on it. You know, he'll be able to retain energy cards thanks to the two EXP share that are on his Pokemon on the bench, and then all he'll need is one single attachment on this Raichu to Dynamic Spark and KO whatever Alex Shemansky has in the act spot, really setting himself up nicely here to close this game out. Yeah, in game number three, it's Ryan Miller who's establishing this checkmate scenario, and it's thanks to the beautiful utilization of the Iron Hands EX, double turbo energy being used by both players, and you can see the acceleration of key attacks trying to maintain tempo has been the name of the game. I think Ryan is debating on what this last discard should be. Funny to see a <laughs> wow. electric generator be discarded, but there's really not too many energy cards left in the deck. Ryan wants to shore himself up against a potential Roxanne by getting the Mew EX onto the bench. That mm -hmm. is going to be potential draw power if Alex does hit him with that Roxanne. Uh, I would like to see Ryan put that third EXP share in play. That's a little bit of insurance against the pair of Lost Vacuum that Alex has in his list. Boss's orders brings up Comfey. And the EXP share attached to Squawkabilly EX. Beautifully done. Restart to draw a couple more cards. Up to three. Tons of lightning energy ending up in the hands. And Iron Hands EX number two still waiting. Ampy very much taking two more prizes. Ryan Miller one attack away from advancing to top four. Alex Shemansky re-promotes the Radiant Charizard EX. Yeah, this is going to be tough for Alex Shemansky to overcome if there's a way to make it happen, though, Alex Shemansky is going to sniff it out. I think his play has probably got to be some combination of Roxanne plus Counter Catcher on this Zapdos and then Sableye, spreading damage for multiple turns onto Ryan's benched Pokemon. It almost paid off for him in game number two. So Zapdos being shredded in the active could be the way. Lost Vacuum. Gets rid of Manaphy, gets rid of the EXP share, diffusing that threat, that time bomb of the Maridon EX. Does get to 10 cards in the Lost Zone. Something Alex also may be thinking of is boss's orders to KO the Raichu V. And that is exactly what we will see. 
hoping that Ryan Miller does not have another boss's orders or an escape rope to close out the game or a good way to power up one of his Pokemon. And that's exactly why Alex Shemansky, when using Lost Vacuum, got rid of the Lost Vacuum that was on this Maridon EX. That's the best potential attacker. And after the Pal Pad shuffles these supporters back in, Alex Shemansky is in a nail-biting situation, Chip. This has really come down to the wire. Game three, Alex Shemansky fighting back valiantly with this Radiant Charizard. And when you know the game is so even, all you can do is set up as best you can, hope that your opponent doesn't have the card that, you need, that they need to win. It's going to come down to go. this. Ryan Miller with one prize card to take. Does he find a boss's orders or a s escape rope? If his escape rope is in the deck, this Peony could close things out for him. But did he play the escape rope earlier on in Alex the game? Shemansky it is won. in the discard pile. Oh, no. Again, there is only one escape rope in Ryan Miller's deck, folks. There's two switches. If he can find a boss, he can win the game. But I don't even know if he can thin his hand down. It's all, it's all lightning low energy. enough to use restart to dig. He's There's gonna attach this energy for turn to the Maridon. Use the peony. Alex Shemansky getting a little excited here. Knows he's got himself a shot. Oh, is he gonna come down to the Pokemon catchers? He's got two Pokemon catcher in his deck right now, Skarzik. That's two 50-50s <laughs> to win the game and move on to top oh. four. It all comes down to this, two coin flips. He hasn't hit heads on this yet, Chip. Needs just one heads to win the game. It's off, off the, the table. table. Can he do it? Evens are heads, tails are odds, and it's his tails. tails on the first one. Pokemon one flip catcher. to come. It's the heads. heads. Ryan Miller finds the game winning play to move on to top four, defeating Alex Shemansky. What a neck and neck game. Alex Shemansky's been doing the impossible, making such a crazy run with this deck that everybody rode off. Meanwhile, Maridon staying alive in this biggest regional of all time. Iron Hands doing its heavy lifting that it needs to do, advancing to top four. Congratulations, Ryan Miller. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Congrats as well to Alex Shemansky. He's had an amazing tournament run. He was the first seed coming into top cut here. 38 match points mm -hmm. at the largest regional championships ever. He should hold his head high about this accomplishment, but he's a fierce competitor. You know, he wants as many victories as he can amass. But today it was Ryan Miller standing in his way. Yeah. Alex Shemansky, of course, a player of his caliber, would make this unfavored matchup come down to such a close game three scenario but Ryan Miller stuck to his guns, made use of the Iron Hands EX, very smartly utilizing the Flaffy and the Zapdos, trying to outplay the double escape rope, and every single game got at least one or two attacks with the Iron Hands. Yeah, really scrappy set overall for these first two games, and it really felt like the decks finally got rolling in game three for our players. Alex had a decent shot to close out game number one, but Ryan had the switch card waiting to switch into the Mew EX and then utilize that Maridon EX one more time. And it could, in game three, could have gone either way for sure, where Alex Shemansky was just trying to kind of stall with the Zapdos. Ryan Miller had to make some very hard choices, you know, discarding the Iron Hands EX, having to give up, a, give up a lot of lightning energy, especially in game three with three lightning energy in the prizes. Um, it was looking pretty dicey. We've seen that Maridon decks get they want their electric generators to hit so much, they get desperate and run like 15, 16, 19 lightning energy. This one only has 14. Yep, 14 energy and like we've said, the three in the prize cards for game number three. Just made those generators all that less likely, but they came through in the clutch when Ryan Miller needed them the most. And the Pokemon catchers, a completely oddball inclusion that we had been speculating about the entire set. And you can look how long this highlight reel is because there are so many strong <laughs> oh, and awesome moments in this best of three. This is another one for the history books, Yeah, Chip. an incredibly close game. You know, just a, a, a great showcase of what a Pokemon TCG match can have in store. Ryan had to hit heads on one of those two catchers. Otherwise, <laughs> Alex Shemansky would surely have closed things out. And it did come through for Ryan Miller. It just has the hand face up. The, it's just Pokemon catcher number one. 
Andy, roll off the table. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was <laughs> keeping I was, us truly on the edge of our seats back here. Star I know. Zing. I the camera wasn't on me; it was on the table because I was reeling in my chair, <laughs> just going completely buck wild back here in the caster area. You love to see a smile from Alex Shemansky as well, recognizing the situation, knowing there's nothing he could have really done there at the end of the game, and you know just being glad that he had this journey to get to top eight. But it's going to be Ryan Miller continuing his journey as we move into top four. Maride on EX staying alive. Just what a pleasure to see that game and to see it be so close. That is the quality of games that you can expect here in top eight for the biggest regional of all time. And I am just, whew. I can only imagine how the players must feel after that because I'm yeah. the one who's tuckered out. Truly, truly. Yeah.